Not in recent history had a team so dominated its sport like the 1985 Chicago Bears. Three, two, one. The dream is reality. The Chicago Bears are world champions of football. They were world champions in the truest sense. NFL ambassadors off to London on a preseason mission. Where we go, cheerio. Hello. Big William rode the double deckers and gazed at Big Ben. A country once governed by Prime Minister Harold Wilson met Defense Minister Otis Wilson while Walter Payton ran into rock star Phil Collins. Hello, Walter. Walter, how are you? Nice to meet you, man. Pleasure's all mine. Ah, Walter. Who's that? It's my son, Simon. Hi, Simon, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you sign his bowl for him? Be glad to. Yeah. All right, thank you. Right. See, no wonder they can hold the bowl. Look at the hands. <laughs> After winning over the hearts of Londoners as well as the game against Dallas, it was time to pop back across the pond and defend their Super Bowl title. Pressured to repeat and targeted by opponents, the Bears would be severely tested. Third down and five from the top. Oh, 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 the play, pick it up, football. It's picked up on the play by the Bears. Get it to the end zone. With a touchdown, it's Wilbur Marshall. He got the sack and recovered the fumble, a touchdown. Did, did he get the sack? He went right through Eric Hill. Painting in motion to the left side. Glutty takes rolling out left, oh. being chased by Browner. Stops and heaves the left side of the end zone for Peyton over the center. If there's one thing tougher than winning a world championship, that's defending one. But in 1986, the Bears won 14 games, the most ever by a defending champion. They opened the season by winning six in a row and closed it out with another seven straight victories. Along the way, four different quarterbacks guided them. Key injuries plagued them. And in the end, they came up short of their dream to repeat as world champions, although it wasn't for lack of effort. As Mike Ditka stated, we may have lost the battle, but we haven't lost the war. We will be back. In 1985, Chicago broke camp on a mission. With a reputation, that mission would be even tougher to accomplish in 1986. It's another year, and it's going to be tough. Everybody's going to be shooting for the Bears. So we have to tighten our belts a little bit and just, you know, bear down and go get them. The sleds were hit. London was conquered. And on opening day, the Bears rang in 86 with a dramatic exhibition of big plays against Cleveland. Look out. 20, got an opening, 25, tripped up across the 30, breaks a tackle, 35, 40 down the right side. He may go all the way. He's going to go all the way to the 20, to the 15, ah. to the 5. Touchdown! And the Bears are on the board in electrifying fashion. In the slot left side is Webster Slaughter, Kozar Locker. Hey. Jim McMahon was forced out of action in the fourth quarter, but ultimately Mike Tomzak and Matt Suey landed the knockout punch. Suey the little setback, Tomzak barks out the signals, give to Suey, starting to the left, cuts back toward the middle, hey, hey, hey. tackle the hey. right, for the touchdown! All right. Touchdowns by the special teams, the defense, and the offense keyed a 41-31 victory. But the following week versus Philadelphia, Touchdowns would be hard to come by against an old buddy named Brian. Get to him. Oh, no. Maury Buford's booming punts helped Chicago win the important battle of field position, not only in this game, but all season long just as the play of Chicago's truly special teams aided them throughout the year. In overtime, 
The special teams won it as Dave Durison forced a fumble that Vesty Jackson recovered, setting the stage for Kevin Butler. Over the arm extended, and here is the snap, the placement made, the kick by Butler. The Bears have defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 13 to 10. Against Green Bay, Steve Fuller and Keith Ortigo spearheaded a come-from-behind 25-12 win for Chicago's third straight victory. After three hard-fought triumphs, the Bears buried the Bengals for their fourth straight. McMahon was back. He scored on his own, hooked up with Peyton for another, and found Willie Galt deep for a 21-0 first quarter lead. Peyton Malone set back, McMahon steps to the pocket, rainbowing the left side, going hey, hey. for Willie Galt! He's, He's got, got it! There. 4, 15, 10, 5, uh, 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 All right. The defense picked off five passes, logged four sacks, and held Cincinnati to 60 yards rushing, while Thomas Sanders closed out a 44-7 rump in an undefeated September. Five in Chicago territory, and on Sanders finds a hold up off side down the left sideline, 30 to the 40, to the 45, 50, he's going all the way, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, 75 yard run. The Minnesota Vikings outscored everyone in the NFC last season. In week five, they were shut down and shut out. The Bears won for the 20th consecutive time behind McMahon, rolling to their fifth straight win, 23 to nothing. Powered by five first half sacks and a touchdown run by Dennis Gentry, the Bears ran over Houston, 20 to seven. With a spotless six and zero record, the Bears had picked up right where they left off. There were many reasons for their dominant start. One was the offensive line. It begins with all pro center Jay Hilgenberg, number 63, as the Bears led the entire NFL in rushing for a record fourth straight year. Hilgenberg guards Tom Thayer, number 57. Mark Bortz and Kurt Becker were battering Rams up the middle. All pro Jim Covert stood up defensive end and Keith Van Horn helped give Bear quarterbacks the safest pass pocket in the NFC. Though often sidelined, Jim McMahon started in six Bear victories. And Chicago won seven times behind Mike Tomczak. Veteran Steve Fuller was a willing and able backup. Willie Gall turned in his best year ever, catching scoring passes from all four quarterbacks, including Doug Flutie by season's end. A rotating quarterback derby in the absence of receiver Dennis McKinnon lessened the effectiveness of the passing game. But possession receiver Keith Ortigo and home run hitter Willie Galt were a pair that could be counted on. Another consistent pair were tight ends Tim Reitman, number 80, and Emery Moorhead, both sure-handed third-down targets. Summer camp and the preseason will ultimately determine who will be next year's starting quarterback. But there's one bear whose job is certain, a man with little left to prove. Gentry in motion to the right side. It is a second down and one from the 26. Give to Walter. He's got a 15,000 yards as he takes it up the middle across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Walter Payton has just crossed the 15,000-yard plateau. And the way he's going, 18,000 seems like it's just around the corner. Against the Eagles, number 34 established a new mark and promptly achieved another. Morehead on the wing, right side, long count by Tom Zach. Morehead in motion to the near side, hand off to Peyton Leach. Yes, yes, yes. yes. 100th rushing touchdown in the illustrious career of Walter Payton, third oh, yeah. player ever to gain 100 touchdowns rushing. Illustrious indeed. And after 12 seasons, Walter Payton, at the age of 32, still played like a hungry rookie.
For the tenth time, Peyton rushed for over a thousand yards. He now has over 16,000 and finishes off every run as only he can. His statistics have assured him a place in the Hall of Fame. His determination has assured him a place in the heart of every football fan. Peyton has started 168 straight games, a true testament to his remarkable dedication and conditioning. As usual, he was the man, but this season, there were others capable of sharing the burden. Everybody has an equal uh, approach to it. Dennis Gentry, Calvin Thomas, or Thomas Sanders, you put them in there, and we don't even miss a beat. Many big league fullbacks are merely strong lead blockers or short yardage specialists. Matsui does that and a great deal more. He burrows for big games, low to the ground, legs churning like pistons. A series or two later, he comes up with an acrobatic one-hand grab. But most importantly, fullbacks are counted on at the goal line. Sui is at his toughest in precisely those situations. In Thomas Sanders, the Bears have more than a runner who can afford Peyton a breather, as he averaged over eight yards a carry with five touchdowns. Dennis Gentry and number 33 Calvin Thomas distinguished themselves on special teams and in the Bear backfield joining a talented group of runners who total 2,700 yards on the ground, the best in the NFL. A new face counted on for the future was rookie Neil Anderson, who showed signs of why he was a first round draft pick. Depth and desire had them undefeated, but in the season's seventh week, the march finally faltered. Against Minnesota, Mike Ditka saw something quite foreign to him on the scoreboard. An opponent had more points than his Bears. Two weeks later, the Rams' Mike Lansford drilled a 50-yarder with seconds left, and the Bears had suddenly lost two out of three. But Chicago had just what it needed to right themselves. Bear defense. Under new defensive coordinator Vince Tobin, there were different wrinkles and different terminology, but some constants too, like the intensity of middle linebacker Mike Singletary. I want to make sure that the guy on the other side of the ball realizes that I'm going to give him all I've got and realize that I wasn't trying to hurt him and go back to the huddle and say, I don't want to go back that way. I don't ever want to do that again. That's the impact that I would like to leave. Number 50 delivers hits that cause his contact lenses to pop out. He blitzes, covers wideouts one-on-one, -on -one, and never takes the wrong step. You must earn his respect. Dan Hampton is one of the few who has. You ever seen True Grit? John Wayne. That's, that's Dan Hampton. Love to play football the way it's supposed to be played. And anytime you look out there on the field when the game is over, the guy's got the most tape on him, the most blood on him, and snot and everything else, you're looking at Dan Hampton. First time pro bowler Steve McMichael finally was recognized. William Perry became a wrecking ball of a defensive tackle. And sturdy 12-year veteran Mike Hartenstein set a club record for most games played. The Bear defense has a wealth of talent, an army of single-minded all-pros like Richard Dent. Richard's always making big plays, whether he's sacking the quarterback or creating fumbles, whatever it is. Richard Dent is the guy. Dent is strictly big play, and he led the team in sacks for the third straight year. 
But this season, big play honors must go to another. Wilbur Marshall scored a pair of touchdowns and intercepted five passes, the most by a Bear linebacker in 10 years. Quite simply, he was everywhere. Add eight sacks by Otis Wilson and the Bear D compiled 62, the most in the conference. In the secondary, Gary Fensick broke Richie Pettibone's interception record by picking off his 38th pass, and his 1,110 tackles make him the busiest bear of all time. Rookie Vesty Jackson improved with each game. While in his best season ever, cornerback Mike Richardson intercepted a career-high seven passes. Number 22, Dave Durison pounded his way to his second straight Pro Bowl and led all NFL defensive backs with seven sacks. The Chicago Bear defense, perhaps the best unit ever assembled. A unit that crushed seven straight opponents on the way to their third straight division title. It began with a 23-3 beating of Tampa Bay. Mike Tomczak sparkled in his finest performance as a bear, and the defense allowed but a field goal. It was on the road again to Atlanta. The defense buried the Falcons, while Tomczak and Emory Moorhead connected on an 85-yard play that keyed a 13-10 win. The Bears were finding ways to win. And one of the best was when they didn't have the ball. The Packers were next to fall. They get a third and six Green Bay. Long count by Randy Wright. He takes, hands it off. And Hampton nailed it in the end zone. And the Bears are on the board defensively, leading by the score of 2 to nothing. Bracket, a 35-yard punt earlier. Here's the snap. Bracket takes both points. Seven times they would come from behind to win. The mark of a champion. Such was the case against Pittsburgh in an overtime thriller. Kevin Butler on the field goal try. Here it is, a high snap. Butler gets it down. Butler pokes it to the upright. Down. And it's gone! Kevin Butler wins it in overtime. Bears 13, Steelers 10. Shotgun formation for Mike Thompson. Here's the snap from Hilgenberg. Tomczak steps hey, up. Hey, 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 quarterback. Mike Tomczak and Doug Flutie each ran, handed off, and threw for touchdowns in Chicago's fifth consecutive win. Tampa Bay was lucky to score. Very lucky. Dean Young ducks it under the center, takes the snap. He's straight back. He looks to throw. Now, fire away. You can afford to hand over free touchdowns when you're blowing out your opponent. And the Bears had the last laugh when Lou Barnes turned only his third return ever into an 85-yard score. The offense exploded in a 48-14 route. But the following week, again the attack went into hiding. On a Monday night in Detroit, Matt Suey scored their only touchdown. But thanks to the defense and Kevin Butler, the Bears won with four seconds remaining. Here it is, placement there, the kick is up and it is gone! The Chicago Bears have come from behind for a 16-13 victory. In the season finale, the Cowboys were overrun 24-10 as Vince Tobin's defense established an NFL record by allowing the fewest points in a 16-game season and Doug Flutie lit up the Texas sky. 42-yard line, Chicago territory. 
Eagleback offense, Payton the load, set back, Flutie looking to the air. Flutie with time, floats it, the green going right there. Hey, 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 the rush is on, Flutie scrambling left. Hey, hey, Willie in a deep corner. Oh, the left side of the end zone, Willie got it. Take that. Seven straight victories, and it was on to the playoffs. Now look, kickoff return, get in here. All you worked for since June is on the line. Let's go middle cross and stick it right where we need to do it. Middle cross, go! January at Soldier Field. The time and place where playoff opponents were shut out in 1985. But the Washington Redskins would prove to be more than a worthy opponent a year later. Flutie and Galt helped the Bears keep pace, but in the end, turnovers and the Jay Schrader to Art Monk connection closed the curtain on Chicago's season. Brian Thalone setback. Schrader looking over, Bears show a blitz up front, and here they come. Schrader rolling right. Pumps once, throws the right side of the end zone. Wide open, Art Monk, touchdown! The Redskins will advance for the Chicago Bears season certainly filled with their share of adversity and challenges has come to an end for the 14-3 record and it ends in the divisional playoffs in the NFC. It's survival of the fittest. It's a challenge. You make a commitment. You're either better than the other guy or he's better than you. Every play. I learned a long time ago that if you want to be good, you beat the other guy. You beat him physically, you beat him mentally, you beat him uh, uh, condition-wise. That's, that's got to be foremost in your mind that you can play harder and you can play longer than the other guy and in the end if you can do those things you should come out on top the Chicago Bears have been world champions they know what it takes to be the best there is much to prove and achieve and in 1987 there's every reason to believe that Chicago will be back